Greetings, I'm John the Spirit. We are going to make so much granite and welcome to New Omni Factory Super Shorts. But first, because we're going to be using 32 IV thermal centrifuges, which are called Blaze Sweatshops T6350s, and because each takes 8192 EU per tick, which is 32768 RF per tick, which is exactly the amount that one N steel energy conduit transfers, we're just going to replace everything with signalum energy conduits because I think that'll be better. But how, Jonathan, you ask, do you know how many conduits you need? I know exactly how many, but how many? With the power of the conduit probe, if you right-click on a conduit in your network for energy, it'll tell you what the internal buffer of an energy conduit is and the total amount of storage enabled in the network. There's around 14 million energy in conduit storage and 32,768 energy per buffer, so if you plug that in into a calculator and divide, you get 455 conduits, and I've made about 512. Let's begin. I no longer need to hook up four connections of energy conduits to this CEF because the CEF takes 131,002 FE per tick, but a signal of energy conduit delivers 524,288 per connection. This is another milestone for me, by the way. In my last playthrough, I never got to upgrading to signal of conduits, and steel was the last conduit I ever used. Now to test if we've done it, let's recalculate. I'm missing 15 conduits somewhere, and I'm really having trouble figuring out where they are using the Yetta Wrench's great feature. Oh, it's because I removed all those extra connections that I didn't need and reduced some wires. Okay, never mind. Great. Now I have way more conduits than I know what to do with. And now, 32 IV thermal centrifuges. Why do I need all these? Because of TBU fuel. According to the calculations of the reactor planner which made the picture that I posted in the description about this reactor, a pellet of fuel will last 2.08 seconds. You can calculate this by determining the fuel duration of one fuel and dividing it by the number of reactor cells there are. If we need 1 TBU fuel every 2.08 seconds, we need 1 thorium-232 every 0.23 seconds, or every 4.6 ticks. At IV, one thermal centrifuge finishes the job in 146 ticks, which means we need 31.6, or 32, IV thermal centrifuges. To get our thorium dust, we can pulverize granite. I will be using 3 IV macerators. 3 IV macerators will macerate granite every 2 ticks. My calculations indicate that to get 1 thorium dust every 4.61 ticks, you need to have a 43% chance of getting thorium. Which is confusing to me as it doesn't match with my previous calculations, but um, people say that using only 3 IV blendomatics is sufficient. So we'll find out, I guess. It's not like running out of thorium will kill a reactor. Running out of cryothium definitely will. These 3 IV machines will use 3 whole amps of IV, but as the recipe for thorium dust to thorium 232 only uses 48 EU per tick, 32 thermal centrifuges running this only correspond to 12 amps, so we'll only use 12 amps of IV from the thermal centrifuges, so in total we'll use 15 amps of IV, which is 2 amps underneath what our whole system can support. We are currently using almost 90,000 RF per tick. Luckily, the remainder is just enough to keep up with the machines. Now as 3 IV macerators run every 2 ticks altogether, we need 1 granite every 2 ticks. Granite requires 800 RF in the igneous extruder. An igneous extruder, right now at reinforced, uses 50 RF per tick, Excuse me, my calculations are slightly wrong and actually indicate that we need granite every 1.666 repeating ticks. One reinforced igneous extruder will produce granite every 16 ticks, so we'd need 10 or 11 of them. Thanks to our oodles of signalum aluminum, a signalum conversion kit is not hard. This igneous extruder now runs at every 10 ticks, which means we need ever so slightly more than 6. I'm smelting up some mana-infused metal dust for auxiliary reception coils to see if I can reduce the number of signalum igneous extruders we need. If you add three auxiliary reception coils, this should run every roughly three ticks. So two of these should do the job. To fill these extremely quickly, I'm going to use fluid laser relays from Actually Additions on an interface. You can get them by atomic reconstructing energy laser relays. We'll also need a laser wrench. Here are two laser relays. One is on this fluid interface full of water, and one is at the top of this igneous extruder. Hovering over it tells you that fluid flow is in both directions. Let's get a compass, and we'll right-click to set it to out of adjacent blocks, and then we'll do into, and then let's link these up with a laser relay and see if water goes in. Yes, it has gone in. I'm going to place my two igneous extruders right here, and I'm going to set them to auto-output to both of these sides. You can change side config in the configuration menu. For some reason, the igneous extruder does not allow auto-input. You'll want to note that blue is input and orange is output. This bottom right corner represents the back. You can left click and right click to shuffle through. I believe this black mark as opposed to orange or blue means that no interaction will be allowed. Let's try it. This is an incorrect statement. 
We'll actually set these igneous extruders to output only to one side, and we're going to make a drawer network for fast distribution of items. We'll make 32 controller slaves, which, as you may recall, act like drawers in the sense that they allow you to access an entire drawer network. We'll create birch trim, which lets us expand a drawer network without using actual drawers. We'll put our drawer controller here, and place drawer trim down like this, and make a stack of 9 controller slaves on either side, and we'll set up 4 drawers. We'll slap a bucket of lava into each of these igneous extruders, put in our laser relays and set the only into and only out of correctly, and now that this is hooked up to water, we can watch the magic happen. Once you put granite into this basic drawer, the igneous extruders will constantly export into the drawer system, we can see it happening now. I'm busily making a bunch of item filters so I can pull items like granite or thorium dust into the correct machines. The 35 machines I'll be placing here require only 15 amps altogether, so I only need one 16x IVCEF. Signalum is faster to create than Lumium, so I'll be using Signalum cables for the actual running, but you need to use Lumium to make the IVCEF. CEF IV. In an IV macerator, it takes 5 ticks to run granite, so we'll use 4 granite per second. Luckily, a conveyor uses 8. I'm going to filter the conveyor into this blendomatic on granite. Once I set it to import, granite should go in, and it's going fast enough for it to be able to run. However, if we set the auto output to be here, and turn on auto output, and then give black granite dust a space in a drawer, it shouldn't be exported. Why? Because manual I.O. is disabled. Don't forget to set allow input from output side, so that it still pulls in automatically. Looks like it's now working. And of course, if we set it to disable, it doesn't work. The idea is the conveyor changes what, how the inventory of the machine is exposed to any other outside extraction or insertion features, or even the auto output. This is only possible in dev in the recent update. I don't understand why, but apparently I'm slightly wrong and I'm getting a net loss on granite from the Ineos extruders. Weird. I'll make another one a little bit. I placed a storage and void upgrade in the black granite drawer and a storage upgrade in the thorium drawer. Now to configure this blaze sweatshop, one by one, painstakingly, all 32. Halfway done. Before you do this, don't forget to actually hook up the rest of your signal of numismatic dynamos, because currently I'm using all my power and it's not enough. Okay, all my numismatic dynamos are now running, apparently at maximum power. Why they are doing this when I shouldn't even be using all my power is in question. Although the conduit probe tells me that I'm only outputting 350,000 RF per tick, whereas I should be inputting 600,000. So what, uh, this should be fine, we'll see, hopefully we survive. I'm just not going to upgrade this drawer until I'm absolutely sure that the reactor is working. Alright, they're all here now. Let's take a quick gander at our energy conduit system, and it looks like we're still not using all of our power. Yay! It looks like we also have a slight net loss on thorium dust. However, it is also true that we are not running this at full capacity, and I still need to get another igneous six shooter, so let me get back to you once I've done that. It looks like adding one signalum igneous six shooter without any augmentation still isn't quite keeping up. I'm just going to go overboard with three auxiliary reception coils and see if it's enough to get a net gain on granite. Even then, we're still not getting a net gain on granite, which is confusing to me, but we are getting, we seem pretty stable in terms of the number of thorium dusts we have. If we need to, I'll slap a controller slave up here and put a fluid laser relay on the bottom of an AU6 shooter and hopefully that'll work, but it looks like we're, yep, we're getting a slow, slow net gain on thorium dust, which means these saturated our blaze sweatshops. We're also filling them up with thorium-232 right now. One problem, apparently my calculations were wrong several times in a row, and I actually do need 33 blaze sweatshops, but I don't want to make it. Every 0.04 out of 2.08 seconds, I will not be running my reactor, I suppose. I'll lose a whole 30,000 RF per tick. Oh no. So sad. So think about this as reactor prep. In the next episode, we'll actually run our reactor. Theoretically, hopefully, yeah. As always, if you have any feedback, I'd love to hear it. Comments and likes should also help me in the algorithm. I hope you enjoyed, and God bless you all.